Legend tells us that the gods created and destroyed the world four times. A ray of light beamed down from the sky and struck the earth. From it flowed water, spilling out over the mountains and plains. With it, life was born. After their intervention, the gods observed how this life expanded. Patiently, they watched its evolution and development. Trees spread over the arid earth and the sky, previously grey and roiled by endless storms, turned calm. Time passed, and the ephemeral creatures that inhabited the world evolved. Intelligence and consciousness emerged. Some of the beings started to speak to their creators. They thanked them for having given their lives meaning, for things worth striving, and for dreams. With all this, something marvelous came into being, civilization. The different peoples multiplied and flourished in harmony, sharing knowledge and becoming wiser and wiser. The gods contemplated all of this with satisfaction. But then, something happened. These creatures, who had come so far, were invaded by ambition and greed. All the knowledge accumulated over centuries, all the advances, were now being used by some to dominate others. That's when the violence started. Wars broke out, like a great storm devastating everything in its path. Everything that these beings had achieved evaporated. The gods were furious. A great firestorm raised the earth and burned down its forests. The water that emanated from the mountains evaporated. The peoples were condemned and all intelligent creatures vanished in the flames. Then the gods decided to try again. As the teachings of his master flooded his mind, Teku opened his eyes. In front of him he saw all the stars in the firmament. Suddenly he heard a fire crackling nearby. The last thing he remembered were the voices of alarm. His home was being attacked. Then, he staggered to his feet. There was no time to lose. Teko couldn't go on. It was too dark.
Baka Baka. Oh no. That poor man told Teku what happened. The tribe of the Wakcha had attacked the village and captured prisoners. One of them was Yaka, the tribe's shaman. He had to do something. Toluca! <clears throat> Before going into the forest, Teku looked back one last time. His village, once full of life, was now an immense flame that reared up against the darkness of the night sky. The few survivors left waved goodbye to Teku in a small gesture of hope. The tears streamed down their masks as they thought about all that had been lost. But there was no time to lose. He was determined to find Yaka and the rest of his men. After all, a light guide must never abandon its shaman, no matter what. After three hours of crossing the forest, as he followed the trail of the Wakchas, the first rays of sun started to filter through the branches of the trees. When he emerged from the thicket, Teku stopped at the foot of a cliff. The captor's trail ended there. There was a large marsh down below, and a few bonfires dotted the landscape. It could be them. Teku leaned out over the abyss, trying to figure out the best way of getting down, without realizing that the ground he was walking on was giving way under his weight. His adventure was about to begin. Wake up, Teku. Come on.
Teku observed the gigantic carved rock. It appeared to be an effigy of a powerful toad. It must represent somebody important. Nevertheless, the wooden structure didn't seem very stable. Teku observed the gigantic... Teku observed that He had heard stories about those platforms. The ancients used them to travel rapidly to distant places. But to use it, he needed his candle to be burning. Teku immediately recognized the man who was asking for help. It was one of the bodyguards of Yaka, his tribe shaman. He had to help him. How could he get to him?